All right, let's move on to that second college football playoff game, and that's the Orange Bowl between number two Michigan and number three Georgia. Georgia's a seven and a half point favorite here, over under 45, 45 and a half. This game will be played at Hard Rock Stadium in Miami Gardens, Florida, 7.30 Eastern on ESPN. Georgia was dealing with COVID issues earlier during bowl prep. Um, seemed to be okay now, but it's something to keep an eye on. Dax Hill for Michigan didn't travel with the team, maybe traveled with the team. Sounds like he didn't because of COVID. Who knows if he'll be there in time for the game. That's a massive loss if he's out. Um, other than that, I, I guess there's the quarterback question with Georgia, but I, it looks like I, mean, I assume Stetson Bennett is going to start. Ooh, any other newsworthy things here? Uh, Georgia's defensive coordinator is leaving, um, but – it's a college football playoff game, so you can expect all hands on deck. Dax Hill was the main body uh, to watch there. I will get into this game in a sec. But I'll go off of you again. What do you see here? I think using Dan Lanning, defensive coordinator for Georgia, going to Oregon, you know, as narrative as to why Georgia, you know, won't be playing their best in this game is a little, like I said, narrative street because – what helps in a recruiting when you're on a recruiting visit inside of a, a player's house in front of his parents having a national championship ring on. So I, I don't think Dan Lanning is like one of these one foot out the door and I don't care about this. So I, I would put yeah, that one. It's a college football playoff. Yeah. So the one thing that sticks out to everyone is that David Ajabo and Aiden Hutchinson are a wrecking crew and they cannot be stopped right now. That's on everybody's brain. And in passing downs, that is absolutely the truth where they have a pass rush grade of third for Michigan uh, per PFF. But when you flip over to the rush defense, it's a completely different story. 109th in stuff rate, 53rd in standard downs line yards. There are five running backs with at least 45 carries for Georgia. You throw Stetson Bennett's 293 rushing yards in there, and there is a long list of names that can keep Michigan defense in standard downs. Uh, in, of Bennett's rushing yards, half of them have come on design calls. So, you know, we mentioned that what Alabama is in man and zone coverage and how good they've been. Michigan's been better in the back seven. Uh, I mean, they're graded just as high with, you know, leading off with DJ Turner. So I don't think Georgia is going to line up and try to throw the ball down the field, especially with Stetson Bennett. And if the offense is not capable of getting the ball, you know, running on this defense, which they should be able to. I mean, Ajabo and Hutchinson are coming so hard off the, you know, especially off the edges that running it up the gut may be right in order. Um, but we'll see what happens, because I think if they get into passing downs consistently, Todd Munkin may elect to put in JT Daniels. And, the, and you know, I've, I've heard from practice reports that he is throwing the ball a lot more. So it's going to be interesting to see if tempo is where Todd Munkin goes with the running game, keep substitutions from coming on the field. But taking advantage of this defensive line and this defensive front seven from a run game perspective, that's what the game plan is going to be. If Michigan is able to get into passing downs, we'll probably see JT Daniels because Stetson Bennett, when he has pressure, he's had more turnover-worthy plays than big-time throws. He has an adjusted completion percentage that drops 30% when he has a crowded pocket. He does not like pressure whatsoever. JT Daniels, if you combine some of his numbers from this year, last year, he's pretty smooth, especially when the blitz is on. Uh, he has no drop whatsoever in his adjusted completion rate when he has blitz on him. Uh, when you look over the past two year sample size at Georgia, I think quick outs over to a job over a job. and Hutchinson, that's going to be the key in passing downs. Travion Henderson was targeted five times out of the backfield, did some damage for Ohio state against the Michigan defense as to where, you know, Jackson, Jackson Smith, Najigba and Garrett Wilson and Chris Olave after they caught the ball, they were allowed no extra yards whatsoever. So Georgia, like Alabama, I think is going straight rush. They have five guys that can do it. That's a huge stable to give a month to get healthy with this offensive line. I think Munkin's going to go look at the Wisconsin tape and see how they attack them. Five yards per play on standard downs. Wisconsin had two explosive drives. How often have we said that this year? So that's going to be the game plan, I think, from an offensive perspective. Big handicap, though, comes on the other side of the ball. And the big, you know, Blake Corum, Hassan Haskins, Donovan Edwards, are they going to keep Michigan out of passing downs? Because the team that has more passing downs in this game is the loser, period, on offense. Cade McNamara having to throw in passing downs is not what Michigan is trying to get to. So my guess is that Devontae Wyatt, Jordan Davis, you know, they're top 20 in standard down line yards. They're 10th in opportunity rate. Teams are not running on Georgia whatsoever. This will be the best rush defense. Forget Ohio State. I mean, this will be probably the best rush defense that they've faced. That includes Wisconsin. 
and there are eight defenders. <laughs> this is what I couldn't believe. Go up to P go out to PFF, dump out individual run defense grades for all the players, top 200 individual. Eight of them are Georgia players. Uh, and that's like cutting, that's making sure that they played at least 300 snaps. So, I mean, eight individual players in the top 200 against the run. This is going to be really tough for Michigan. Um, both these teams are excellent on special teams. Both of these teams are top six in tackling. I, I think Mike McDonald, you know, coming in from the Ravens is great. He has revamped the entire coverage scheme, the entire way that the, that the back seven has worked for Michigan is what's got them here to this point, in my opinion, uh, is the changes that they've made to finally get over that Ohio State hump. But it's not applicable to Georgia at all. Uh, you're going to have to be able to defend the run, which they've had a problem with. So as for the number, I make it eight. I know SP plus makes this six and considering the entire state of Michigan is going to be gambling on this, on their Wolverines, there's going to be some pretty heavy money on Michigan and you're going to see sharp hit it at seven. And I'm starting to see, you know, some, some sharp books out there right now deflate the, the juice. I think we're going to get a seven at some point and you're probably going to end up seeing uh, some buyback on Georgia. You know, as for the total, if JT Daniels comes into this game or Stetson Bennett is running up tempo with a heavy rush attack, they can take advantage of this Michigan team and they can get some points up on the board. Now, let's not forget the Georgia secondary can be taken advantage of. Alabama did it. They finally proved that this young, raw secondary that wasn't tested all year can be taken advantage of. So I expect J.J. McCarthy or Cade McNamara to get an explosive play or two when they're in passing downs. They'll get their points. I just don't think that they can keep up with what Georgia is going to try to do, which is steamroll them and stay out of passing down. So Georgia at seven, I'm interested. Uh, over 45, I've already bought. I think that number is going to continue to go up as we get closer to the game. Yeah, low number on a uh, for a, a college football semifinal. I This is all Georgia for me. Um, I think this is a horrendous matchup for Michigan. Dug into this game really deep. All I want is seven. Um, I just want the seven to pop so I can hit Georgia. And look, the Georgia secondary, which we had questions about all year, was exposed by Alabama. Yeah, that was a Heisman Trophy winning quarterback and Jamison Williams, that wide receiver. Michigan's passing attack is not that. This is – Michigan's passing attack is similar to some of the average SEC run first teams that Georgia completely shut down during the regular season. And just like everyone has crowned Bama already, did we forget about Georgia all year long? Unlike Alabama, they just dominated everybody they played. Do we forget about that all of a sudden? And, you know, when I look at the matchup here, Michigan, look, these are two slower paced teams that like to run it. They're both outside the top 90 in adjusted pace. Um, but I mean, for example, Michigan's 87th in EPA per pass and Georgia is number one in a lot of categories against the pass. We saw them get exposed last year, but you know, they, 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 I mean, for, for example, Michigan has the same exact success rate on runs that it does on passes. That's, that's pretty hard to do, but you cannot run on Georgia. You cannot do it. They, you know, they're going to play with two high safeties and you mentioned some of their run grades. How about this? Take interior run defenders. Three of the top four in the country are on Georgia. Wyatt Davis and Carter. The other one is Mustafa for Penn state. who's out right. that three of the top four. And that frees up Dean and company. They also excel against inside zone, just dominate inside zone, which Michigan loves to run. Michigan's also struggled immensely with stunts and twists. That's all Georgia does up front. Uh, on the other side of the ball, and also you know, the other side of the ball, when, and by the way, Michigan number one in EPA on trick plays this season by like a wide margin, Georgia very disciplined defense. I don't think you can expect to get a lot there. And then, Brittany, who didn't play for Georgia, their slot. I don't know why he didn't play against Alabama, but Alabama feasted with Williams and then in the slot. I expect him to come back. Chris Smith, who was a little banged up at safety, he should be healthy here. So the secondary will be healthier, and I don't think Michigan can attack it the same way that Alabama did. I'm not even close. On the other side of the ball, I think Michigan does have some weaknesses against the run. I think Georgia will be able to run the ball here. No Dax Hill would be huge, especially against Brock Bowers, who's just a stud at tight end. And Michigan, you know, Georgia's number one in the country in EPA per pass on early downs. Why? Play action. Teams are so worried about the run. They're throwing on play action. Well, Michigan, 4.3 yards per play allowed on non-play action dropbacks. Seventh on play action dropbacks. Allowed 114 passer rating against play action. 
that's bad here. That's a really bad sign. So can Michigan get, I mean, with the key is you got to get Bennett playing from behind or in clear passing situations. I don't think Michigan is going to be able to do that here. And, you know, it's, this is a Georgia team that dominated everyone all year, lost in the SEC championship in embarrassing fashion, had to sit on that for a month. Everyone hearing, oh, Georgia, same old Georgia. I expect them to come out with their hair on fire. This is a team that just was dominant all year long. People are forgetting that. Recency bias city. Everyone's remembering the Michigan beat Ohio State in the blizzard. I think Georgia, this is just a great look. Michigan, I give them a ton of respect for getting here, getting over the Ohio State hump. They deserve to be in the college football playoff. I don't think it'll be a complete blowout, but I, I think the Michigan offense is going to struggle. Really good matchup for the Georgia defense, and it's a really good matchup for the Georgia offense across the board. And now Michigan's not going to beat itself with penalties and turnovers, which is a good thing in a game like this. But I think they're, this is just a really poor matchup. I want the seven. I want Georgia. This is still the best team in the country.